now we have all of Grandpa's old shop manuals, including the uh, workbook that he took to get his small engine certification back in the day. Foley Bellsaw Institute. Old Tecumseh service manual above that. A bunch of manuals for different ride mowers, push mowers, weed whackers. Uh, old boat motors, stuff like that. We have all that there. Got the Red Sox Kenworth here. Okay, I was thinking the hood went up on that. I guess not. Then we got the old globe. This is a globe. I think it dates back to the 1940s, if I remember right. It's all metal. It's taken a couple hired falls. As you can see, it's dented pretty bad in spots. It's got the old, it's like the USSR and all this stuff. Soviet Union, you know what I mean? Yes, yeah, see, Soviet Union. That tells you how old it is. Pretty awesome. So most of the countries aren't still those countries. <sighs> Being it from the Soviet Union days. But I actually homeschooled with that back in the day. That's all we had for Globe. And then later on we got a more updated one. But And we never... Like, we knew that the Soviet Union wasn't the Soviet Union, so then that was extra education, right? Because you look on there, and it's the Soviet Union, and the mom's like, but it's not now, and here's the reasons why. And <laughs> It was awesome, though. All right. We got a tractor up here. A little tractor photo. Mom did all these tractor photos because my border on the wall is, is John Deere when she did my room, so she put all these tractor photos in for me. And here we have the Hershey's. Old 1940s style delivery truck. Hershey's Crackle Arrow. Hershey's and Hershey's Bittersweet. Then we got the old Dodge Charger here made by Ertl. And uh, Roscoe's Cop Car made by Ertl. Then we just have an old, old, well, I don't know. It says it's a wheat, a wheat truck, fire wheat. Oh, no, fine wheat, but it's full of wood, so I, you, you do the math. Or maybe that... No, that's supposed to be wheat. Okay, it's just brown. All right, so we have the old wheat truck here. Then we have an old rotary phone here on the wall. This one actually does not work. This one came before the other one. The wires are missing out of the back of it to hook it up. And as you can see, it has a little problem here. But I do want to get this one working. This one was from my childhood, the church I grew up in. Uh, they had this on the wall downstairs for the kids to play with in like the nursery area. We used to play and pretend and make phone calls and stuff all that, right? So, anyway, I brought it home when they cleaned out the old stuff in the church. They were going to throw it away. And I wanted to hook it up. And that one isn't hooked up yet, but the other one is. So, that's pretty much all that. I got my closet over there with some stuff in it. But that's pretty much it for this side of the room. So now, cha-cha-cha-cha, we turn our attention to this side of the room. So we have the Faith Moves Mountains that Mom made me here. It's a little wall hanging. And this is the old, like, kickboard off my step stool. As a kid, I had a little step stool that went in the bathroom to help me, you know, you one of those you get up on so that you can, you know, brush your teeth in the sink and look in the mirror. <laughs> Which I didn't use for long, as we all know. I'm like six foot three now. But, yeah, this is the old one. The old board off that. We have a cross with the Lord's Prayer. Now this, right here. Let me just say, there's a story behind this. This is, of course, Roy Orbison. Uh... And this is the lyrics that he sang. There was a band called the Traveling Wilbur uh, Will <laughs> Tongue Tied. Wilberries. Traveling Wilberries. And he was in it, and the guy from ELO was in it. I can't think of his name. Tom Petty, George Harrison, uh, Bob Dylan. So anyway, he didn't live longer than what, two songs for the band, and then he died. Robertson did. And they dedicated End of the Line to him. And he actually got to record his part of the song before he died. So, But he, did, he didn't live for the release of the song. 
So, these lyrics, there's a, a kind of a personal story. I had a dream about him during a very hard time in my own life where he actually came here. and It was a very powerful, moving dream. It's hard to explain. So anyway, these lyrics that he sang from End of the Line were very powerful lyrics. Roy Orbison had a very tragic life. Uh, his wife died. I think a couple of his kids burned to death in a fire. He had a very bad life. And these lyrics that he sang, when you know his life story, are so powerful. It says, well, it's all right, even when push comes to shove. Well, it's all right, if you've got someone to love. Well, it's all right, everything will work out fine. Well, it's all right, we're going to the end of the line. So this is very powerful with his life story and all that considered. And those lyrics have been kind of there for me in some hard times as an, an inspiration. You know, if he could sing that after everything happened, it chokes me up. Anyway, that's the story behind that. We have a, there's the border I was telling you. That Mom put up John, uh, John Deere border. Here's a painting I painted of a log yard on a cabinet door. Larry got me painting on cabinet doors. I think his son was a woodworker or something, and he had all these cabinet doors kicking around, and and uh, he gave them to Larry, and then Larry was giving them out. Because when you paint it on a cabinet door, right, it's already framed. So that's pretty neat. So I did an old truck there with the apprentice crane on it, and a wood pile, a little road. You can see the top of the road there and the bottom of the road there. and There's a little something there. So I did that, and then, I haven't painted in years, I should get back to that, it was kind of fun, I was never that good at it as you can see, but it was fun. So here's an old poster from the Monster Trucks, does it say what year? 2000, 2006, yeah okay. So yeah, 2006, we went to the Monster Trucks, we went to the Monster Trucks a lot when I was a kid, in uh, Speedway 95, back when they were there, now they have them in the big... Cross Insurance Center, I think. But anyway, we went there, and Dad got me this poster, and I had a stuffed, my favorite truck as a kid was the Ninja Turtles truck. It was like, oh yeah, right? So, anyway, he got me a stuffed Ninja Turtles truck. I totally, I was like jumping it and everything. It was stuffed, right? It was always ripping out. Mom always had to sew it up, because I was just like, Meow. So anyway, that was always my favorite monster truck as a kid. And I really liked El Tor logo too. One there with the horns. It was supposed to be like a bull. So yeah. And of course Gravedigger. Bad to the bone. <laughs> and then there's all the drivers down there. So that's kind of a fun memory. Now we have yes. At this point, some of you may not have known, but my workshop is actually just my bedroom. I just have a really big bedroom. And we don't have much of a garage, so I do all my projects here. So, as you can see, this is going to blow your mind. Sparky has friends. Papa Smurf. Vanity Smurf. Okay. And then we've got Chippy. And, of course, Yoda and a stuffed bunny. And Syl. Silly memory. She's French. Don't ask. There's a really embarrassing backstory to that. It's a joke between me and the maniac scientist. So that's why I have a stuffed unicorn. Otherwise, there'd be no way. But it's kind of an inside joke we have going. Like I say, if that video ever gets released to you, you will, uh, you'll know why. <laughs> okay. So anyway, yeah, Sparky has accomplices. Actually, there's a story behind the Smurfs, too. They, I think it was a truck stop in Pennsylvania. Pretty sure that's where they came from. Truck stop, Pennsylvania. And outside the truck stop, there's a little street that led into the truck stop, which was actually called, like, John Wayne Drive, or John Wayne Way, or, or something. It was really awesome. So Dad, actually, when he, because he usually drives truck in the woods, but there was a short time when he did over the road, hauling different stuff, different places. So he won me all three of the Smurfs, Sparky and Vanity and Papa Smurf, out of that crane machine in that truck stop in Pennsylvania. So it's pretty awesome. 
So, I got the Smurfs there. Alright. Moving along. Oh yeah, and I gotta show you this. Codger's Workshop way of freshening up the room. Just, just tie a car or freshener off your ceiling fan. <laughs> it's really funny. Okay, have an old President's poster here. Which, as you can see, needs some more thumbtacks. The fan has blown it down on the corners. Have these ribbons from 4-H when I was a kid that I won for different things. This one was for making birdhouses. That one was also for making birdhouses. Oh, I got some pins there. Clover buds. That's funny. That one's for an Easter magnet. Some, I remember that. Some bunny loves Jesus. And it was a bunny. And then you could stick it on the tree. Uh, not the tree. The fridge. What am I doing? <laughs> notebook clovers. I don't remember. Oh, notebook covers. Okay. Yeah, I remember those. Uh, that's notebook covers. Bone necklace. Turkeys. Yeah, different different ribbons for different things. Here's an authentic Indian arrow. <laughs> that Nan got me from New Mexico when she took a trip out there. So that's pretty awesome. And we have a Roy Orbison 45 here. Pretty Paper. If you have not heard Pretty Paper, you have to listen to it. It's one of my favorite Christmas songs. You don't hear it very often. But it is. That's the only Christmas song he ever sang, to my knowledge. And it's really, really awesome. We have an old... Well, not an old. As old as I am, anyway. Toy gun, Grandpa made. He actually made that himself. It was a little toy rifle for me to play with as a kid. And, you know, electrical tape, the scope, give it that look. And I don't know if it was an old, it looks like an old piece of like, uh, like Pex tubin maybe, with some couplers on the end to give it that chrome look. And then, like, he made gun stocks, actually, for real guns he put together himself so he would have made the gun start just like he did everything else the trigger fell out but there used to be a trigger in there and then he's got the trigger guard and everything and he actually put some crosshairs in the scope for me too it's really awesome so I've got that hanging up there now we come to one of my favorite parts of the room my dresser right here got the old photos here it's an old Looks like an old Thunderbird, maybe. I'm getting glare again. It says dare to go far. Here we get this one that says keep moving. And the radio's blocking it, but it says forward. Old car there. That's Mercury. Of some sort. Now, here we go. We have a football, right? A little football. And we have Troy Aikman. How about them Cowboys? Biggest fan. Troy Aikman card from back in the day, award winning Troy Aikman. It is from 93. Then we have Grandpa's old, what was it, Commodore? Yeah. Yeah, Commodore radio, which actually works, believe it or not. I think I did a video on that. Yeah, I did. Solid state transistor. <laughs> awesome radio. Love that little radio. Then we have. An old, 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 ever-ready flashlight here. I think it was Grandpa's or maybe his father's. Ever-ready. Made in the USA. Look at that. Isn't that weird? It does not work. I can't figure out why it doesn't work. It takes, like, C or D batteries. I can't remember. I wanted to get it working, and I have a couple ideas that might work. I, I think just the contacts are rusted, basically, but I do want to get that working. Then, I am a huge, huge ditto head, okay? Huge fan of Rush Limbaugh. If you know Rush Limbaugh, you know the whole ditto, ditto head joke. You know, ditto head is a person who is like-minded with you. So anyway, I'm a huge Rush Limbaugh fan. listen to him all the time. Started listening to him at like 12 or 13 actually on the radio. So I entered a photo contest way back when. 
and I actually won the photo contest. It was a Christmas photo contest for like the best photos or whatever. I actually won the contest, and he sent me this card. Rich Limbaugh. Dear Ditto Head, thank you so much for taking the time to send in your fantastic photo. I hope you and your family have the best 2018 ahead. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for being part of the extended EIB family. Rush. And then he sent me the limited edition America's Anchor Man Rush Limbaugh Christmas ornament. I left it right in this little thing here because I just, oh, it's awesome. Celebrating 30 years, 30 year anniversary ornament. It's got the American flag on it. There again, I'm getting glare. But anyway, really awesome. Really, really awesome. Then I have old Kenworth here. Purple Flames. With a flatbed. With a load of wood and a beetle bug on the back. <laughs> That's funny. Notice the bread ties holding down the load. And then... This is one of my favorites. I got the old freight shaker here. Freightliner. It's got the Freightliner trailer. The old classic Freightliner. Like it that'd be like a two thousand probably. It's got the little Freightliner hood ornament on it. Pretty awesome. Sunroof. For the bunk. There's so much room in these like studio bunks like that, guys. You wouldn't believe it if you hadn't been in one. I have been in one. I actually went over the road with Dad in a truck just like this, only it was like dark maroon, but it was the same, about the same year as this, Freightliner, that size bunk on it, it was awesome, I loved it, alright, so then, got the American flags, this is just kind of my shelf, I put like spray paints, and tire shine, and armor all, and wood glue, and different stuff like that on, so, oh I do have some fly spray, I thought I was out of fly spray, and it's like right in front of me every day, but I never slowed down to look. Coles Express, cab over. This tag here, Federal, that's actually off an old sewing machine mom used to have. An old 1950s Federal. It was like olive green and white sewing machine. And I loved the sewing machine so much that when it wore out, because it needed a belt, and you couldn't get the belts anymore, so she had to update. But I loved it so much I took the tag off it when it wore out and, and put it on my shelf. And got the fabulous 50s thing here. Uh, that's actually from my 1950s birthday party. Every year, Mom makes me the same cake at my request because I like to keep the same cake every year. So, uh, what is it? Chocolate cake with buttercream frosting? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I forget in between. Yeah, chocolate cake with buttercream, homemade buttercream frosting. And... Every year I have a different theme. So one year I had like Ninja Turtles, one year it was Batman, and one year was like baseball, and one year was, last year was my pickup, like GMC theme. Uh, one year I had a 69 Oldsmobile on my cake. Uh, Dad always decorates my cakes. I had a 1950s birthday. Okay. Everybody came dressed 1950s. It was so unbelievable. We had mom made uh, burgers to order. She had little menus. Burgers to order and homemade french fries and milkshakes and soda floats and like all this stuff from back in the day. And all the guys showed up dressed like the Fawns from Happy Days. We were all wearing leather and like the white t-shirts and jeans. I actually had to go buy a pair of jeans just for the birthday party because as you know I always wear dickies. So anyway. And... Jacob Dow came and he had his hair, he, he said he put like a whole thing of gel in it to get it to do it, he had it all slicked back, and Nan came with her sweater on backwards, cause she said they always did that in the 50s, and a scarf, and it was unbelievable, and then there was Dad, he's like, I don't know what I'm doing, right, and we're like, you should dress like the Fonz, and he's like, no way, so he's like, shows up, and he's like, well, I mean, he was already here, but <laughs> he comes downstairs and he's wearing like, work boots and like a chamois shirt and like suspenders and a fur hat and he's like yeah I'm a 50s logger <laughs> it was so funny anyway guys we had a blast it was great dad put a, a 57 Chevy on my cake and maybe a jukebox I can't remember it was great it was like the best ever and we had the 50s music going in the background through the whole party I'm a huge 1950s and 60s fan I just absolutely love that time period 
love the music. I love all of it. It's just such a part of me. Of course, I'm the old codger, right? So, we got some American flags here. Let's go ahead and do the planes before we get too far into it. That one's a little dusty. There's the SR-71 Blackbird, produced by Lockheed. That is an absolute unbelievable plane. If you don't know anything about this, it was used a lot during the Cold War, I believe. Um, it was a spy plane. Fly over enemy territory, get photos, come back. Very fast plane, I believe. What was it, faster than the speed of sound or faster than... Yeah, yeah. Flew faster than the speed of sound, something like that. And it flew from New York to London in an hour and 45 minutes. It was one Holland machine, I can tell you. Uh, very top secret back in the day. Gigi actually tells some old Air Force stories about that. Coming in for maintenance and stuff at the base, and it actually put up a wall between that and everybody else and let just like a couple guys in to work on it so nobody could even see it because it was that top secret. And it's one of my all-time favorite planes. Uh, probably my most favorite, closest to modern plane. I say closest to modern because they don't use it anymore, but it was used from like the 50s on up through, and a lot of the planes I like were from World War II, so that's like the most recent plane that I like. Um, Lockheed. Interesting fact here. Lockheed was the same company that produced the plane that Amelia Earnhardt died in, basically. I think that was, wasn't the spirit of, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was a Lockheed. Yeah, so that's interesting. Uh, yeah. And there was a movie, uh, oh, what was it called? Fire, fire, something, fire, fox, fire, I don't know. I think it was... It was like an 80s movie, I think. And the storyline, if I remember right, was about Russia. But they had a plane like this. Like, it looked identical to this in the movie. You could tell it was just, they had used the idea from that. Uh, anyway, so it was a pretty cool movie, if I remember right. And yeah, so that is just awesome. I love that plane. Then, I loved the B-25 Mitchell bomber from World War II. One of my, well, probably my all-time favorite bomber. I like the B-17 Flying Fortress 2, but not as much as the B-25. So actually, I was inspired because I was a Lego kid as a you know, little tyke. I didn't really do connects much, but I did do them some. So I was inspired. I'm like, I want to push the limits. And Maniac Scientist... He's going to be so mad. Maniac Scientist made a plane out of Kinex. And I was like, I can do better than that, right? It was like this competition. So, I was like, I want to make the B-25 out of Kinex. So I did. And, you know, of course I had to go props. Because, whoops, how are you going to make, you know, engines, full engines out of Kinex? So I got the props there. I have... Actual folding landing gear. Uh, a little gun on the front here. I have swing down bombs. Which, yes, maniac scientists, I know, are not as awesome as the bombs that you put on your plane. You had a little rod that came down. It's like a little catch. And when you drop the rod past the catch, you had a bunch of those, like, uh, kind of bushing-shaped pieces that slid on the rod. So when you drop the rod, they'd slide off the rod and fall. And I have just detachable. The, the green's supposed to be the bombs. And you just snap them off. and choo. So they fold down anyway. Out of the bomb bay. They have a big gun turn up there that rotates. And of course I got the split fins in the back. So anyway. Yeah, I made that. I can X as a kid. And then we have a Blue Angels plane. Jet over here. And then this is like a little drone thing. The... The, uh, had something to do with SR-71. I'm not exactly sure what it was. But, there's that. Okay. So, now we're to pretty much the workshop. Of course, we have a couple photos of John Wayne here. Uh, as I said before, I really like John Wayne. So, there'll be a lot of John Wayne things in here. Got the chop saw. Have this push mower. 
I'm currently working on. That isn't usually in here, obviously. But it's an old, 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 old MTD push mower from like the 60s. So I'm trying to get that running. I need to do some work to the points and condenser and stuff. And I don't know how long it's going to take. But anyway, got my chainsaws down there, a couple of them. And coming right along here, we have the bench. You guys are very familiar with this area. And I didn't clean this up immaculate because I want this to be somewhat true to the way this would usually be. And the bench would never be immaculately clean. It would always be kind of cluttered, you know, because I'm always working on projects. And every once in a while, I'll take time and I'll clean the whole area. And it never lasts long. It's like then I'm on to the next project and, you know. So I have a 57 Chevy model up there. I have this old Oilsum can. Most of you probably don't even know what Oilsum is. I know they're still in business because at work we have the backhoe that has a def tank. And the def is made by Oilsum. So I think they were absorbed by maybe castor oil don't quote me on that i did some research when i found the can because i'd never heard of them either but they were very popular back in the day and you can see the old style motorist on the front of the can i actually dug that up out in the woods behind the house i dug that up out of the woods too it's an old uh it'd be an old toy truck from like the 40s no axles or anything left in it but yeah so i dug that up got the cafe bastello coffee can back there some STP, gas treatment, <laughs> tire foam. Oh, there's the tire foam I was looking for. Uh, this, Ryobi cab over. That was my own design, too. I wanted to make, I challenged myself to make a lettered box trailer. And so I did. Out of just Legos, Ryobi. Look at that. Went with the black and green, amazingly, instead of the blue and orange. I can't believe it. I should make a twin to it that's blue and orange. I don't know if I have enough pieces, but I should try. You can see it's a fairly simple cab over. Nothing special going on there. And the trailer is lettered on both sides. Where are you? There you are. Okay. So it's both sides lettered. It took me forever to do that. Man. Because you have to get it all planned out right with the length of your trailer and everything. And then... When you have tons and tons of Legos, it's so hard to find the pieces you need. So it took me a really long time. And then I have a rendition, my rendition, of a little... Of course, it's falling apart here. There we go. Of a little motoski snowmobile from the 60s. It's got the blue seat, blue hand grips. I put this little skid plate on the back so that it would actually slide good. I made some homemade skis for that. I did have some skis for this one that were already made skis. This is an old Indy, of course. It kind of matches my Indy I have, my 1990. So here's an old Indy. And we have the little refrigerator there. Don't really use it much. It's fan cooled. I always mean to, but I never really get around to using it just kind of sits there with the good intentions of having something in it and get some antifreeze windshield wash oil different stuff the Ryobi radio and drill the solo my new radio I got for Christmas I should do a review on this actually it's really awesome spinning it around here it's the spark man see he doesn't like to hang out with his friends over here He's, he's more of a, a shop kind of guy. How's it going, old Sparko, huh? Thumbs up. <laughs> looking 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 good, man. All right. So, we have a Peterbilt golf ball. Katana and I actually found in the river. Believe it or not. <laughs> and then this. There is a huge funny story about this. This is a SpongeBob bobber, of course. Obviously. Uh, you guys remember, they still do it. The little kids fishing rods that you get in the kit, right? And it comes with, like, it, and it's themed. So, when I was a kid, I got the little kid's closed face, which, oh, was a nightmare. Fishing rod, it was SpongeBob, 
okay. And it came with this little SpongeBob bobber. And it came with, you remember how the old ones used to have, I don't know if they still do, a little thing in there that you could hook on the end of the line for the kid to practice casting with. Just a little something. It would be related to the character. So for this it was a plankton. I had a little plankton that you could hook on the end of the line. And it would give you some weight and I could practice casting. So anyway, I got this little Spongebob kit, right? Fishing kit. I had this bobber in there. Well, I absolutely loved the whole thing. Because there again, I told you I was a Spongebob fan. So, we got to fishing one day in a bog. And I do mean a bog. It was... Dad was infamous for taking us in these mud holes to fish. <laughs> so anyway, we're fishing, and I cast out, and I lose my bobber. Like, it, it fell off, or, or something, or my line broke. And Spongebob is floating away, and I am crying. I'm standing on the edge of the bank, crying my eyes out, right? I'm just a little, little guy, right? This is a little tiny kid, and I just lost my Spongebob bobber. I might have been, like, four years old. Maybe, maybe five. I don't know. So anyway, uh, he's floating away. And they're all like, you know, mom's like, calm down. It's going to be all right. I'm just bawling my eyes out. So dad takes action reluctantly. He gets in the bog and wades up to his waist in that bog water and goes out and gets my bobber before it floats away and brings it back to me. Like, seriously. <laughs> well, after that, it scared me so much. I never use this bobber again. Okay? And it's become this, this trinket to me now. Because it reminds me of that day. And I love the bobber. And I'll never use the bobber again. Because I don't want to lose it, right? It's childhood memory. So... I used to keep it in my tackle box, but then I took it out because I'm like, well, geez, you know, sometimes like in canoes and stuff, you flip and your tackle box dumps, and I don't want to lose Spongy. So, he just kicks around here. All his little Spongy glory. That's the story behind Spongy. <laughs> I bet you had no idea Codger was so sentimental. <laughs> we have the Saturday evening post with uh, baseball on it. Five cents the copy. That's funny. It's a little tote bag. Hung it up on the wall there. We got another American flag. A little lamp. We have a license plate. Fishing license plate uh, thing. My friend Hannah got me. Hung that up on the wall there. Another John Wayne. Then we have an old clock that was at Nana and Grandpa's when I was a little kid. I love this clock. I've never seen another one like it. It's two little kids. You've been farming long. They're all dressed up. I, I, that is adorable. It just is. It's completely adorable. I'm not ashamed to say it. So I always loved that clock. And now they're both gone. Nana and Grandpa are gone. And so my grandmother gave me this clock to have to remember them by. So I treasure that clock. I rebuilt the internals for it. Everything. And the batteries must be dead in that, too, now. <laughs> I'm terrible about keeping up with my clock. Since I got a phone, right, and then I got my digital alarm clock, I'm terrible about keeping up with whether they're running or not. Fishing rod rack. I just have it hung up here because um, I don't really know where to hang it. I haven't decided. But it, it holds your fishing rods. <laughs> and we have a deer antler here. Jacob Dow and I found. And... Old Remington truck there. And we have King Crunch. Monster truck. Old school Chevy. I love it. Uh, some tools. We have another John Wayne poster here. It's kind of covered up. I had some tools hanging around it. I can't remember the name of the movie. Because I've never seen that movie yet. Was it Green Bray or something? I don't know. I can't remember. There's some eclectic tools and stuff here. Uh, we have the singing fish. I don't think there's any batteries in him. He sings Angel of the Morning. Actually, that's how I discovered that song. I didn't know about the song. I'd never heard the song. And then I heard this guy sing it, and I was like, he rocks. <laughs> so then I had to look up the song. So he sings that, and Down by the River, and uh, I don't know, something like that. 
This, Dad painted for me. I'm a huge wrestling fan. There again, not modern wrestling. As a matter of fact, I hate modern wrestling. I like the old school 80s wrestling. And early, early 90s. Ultimate Warrior. Most of you probably weren't around for that, obviously, like I wasn't either. But, some of you probably remember it. And he painted it glow in the dark so that at night, after this light's been on and it charges up, he painted his eyes and his pupils glow in the dark and kind of around him a little bit and around the edges. So when you shut the lights off at night, this all glows. It's really cool. And you can see just his pupils glowing really bright in the center. So anyway, he painted that for me. And then I have, I can't believe I hung this over a promotional Ryobi poster. I kind of want to just, yeah, wow, I'm going to have to hang that up somewhere else now. I got right over the top of it. Buy one, two, get one free. <laughs> anyway, here's the B25 Mitchell. Got Jaunty Joe on there. They always painted the girl on the side of them back in the World War II days. Got the Indian on him up there. It's a top out of a, a model kit. Box. Love it. Love it. Love it. Alright. So we got the closet there. Not too much going on there. Got my chainsaws. Stuff here. Toolbox. We'll do a toolbox tour if you want to see it later. I don't want to do it in this video. But we'll do it soon. Uh, you'll notice I have a lot of things like this. That just hang on the wall. And obviously they're not like decorative, right? I do that because I like that it gives me the garage feel. Because in a garage you have a lot of things that just hang on the wall like that in the package, right? So you can see it and you know where it is. Well, that's kind of what I like to do here because this is a garage, right? Basically. <laughs> it's a garage that I sleep in at this point. It's, it's very little of it is a room. We have an old, old, old Band-Aid tin here. Pretty awesome. Used to carry worms in it when I was a little kid. And we've got the summer linen air freshener. That's what I usually put in my pickup. And then we have this. There's a story behind this too. Uncle Randy. You've heard me talk about my Uncle Randy. He uh, got me into woodworking. And he came to my birthday. I think it was it my birthday? Yeah, it was my birthday. One year. I don't remember which year, what the theme was, but he came to my birthday one year and he brought me this Stanley handsaw because I was getting into woodworking with the old fashioned hand tools and I'd used his old Stanley saw. And yeah, so he brought me as a birthday gift a Stanley saw. And on the sheath, the cardboard sheath here, he wrote this little tongue twister kind of rhyme kind of a thing. And it says, of all the saws I ever saw, saw, I never saw a saw, saw, as this saw, saws, from Uncle Randy. So, I loved it so much, I actually hung the sheath on the wall there. So, yeah, that's pretty awesome. And we got the old T-bird up there. I think that's a T-bird. Yeah. A little Norman Rockwell thing there. Kid. Bringing his dog back to health. And now we come to pretty much the last of the tour. And we have this shelf. It's kind of eclectic stuff. I have a whole freight shaker I was painting up there. There again, I never really polished up the painting and finished it. I was kind of terrible for never finishing a painting before I started the next one. An old John Deere alarm clock I had when I was a kid. But it hit the floor so many times that it broke. <laughs> So now I just have it as a decoration. This thing, I'll tell you, if you struggle getting up in the morning, you want an alarm clock like these. Nothing is louder than these old alarm clocks. It blows my mind. We have an old Nylant. I don't know if anybody remembers them. They used to make toys for kids back in the day, really tough toys. And I have the windshields busted out of all these and the side windows. But this used to be red. Maybe. And Dad custom painted it for me. Blue and orange, of course. And then he put the redneck way on the back. And he made, the stacks were missing off this one. So he made some stacks out of straws. And painted them chrome for me. So I could have that all dotted up. And then Grandpa, 
he made this log trailer. No kidding. And, uh, painted this one up for me. Black as a kid. Did up all the chrome and everything for me. So, I could have log trailer. And he made the straps and stuff too. Look at that. And then he cut me all these little sticks of wood like that. He cut me a ton of them. And, uh, yeah. So I could have that log trailer. He had, uh, he made me a, a, like a work log trailer and then like a, a nice log trailer. This was the nice one. And then he made me one that was just really big and beefy. All those extra big loads in. And it wasn't all dotted up with the stickers and stuff that I could take out in the mud and just romp with. It was really awesome. So then I got an old deer antler. Jacob Dow and I found that one too, I think. What? Well, did we? Yeah, it was either him and I or Katahdin and I. I forget. We got Grandpa's old stock car racing helmet from back in the day when he used to race. He had an old 50s Chevy. I don't know if it was a 57 or not. I can't remember. That he used to race. Stock car. Dirt racing. And got the Boss Red Sox Cup. Some baseballs there. And a couple little matchbox cars here. Moving down. We have this, which I just set here to get it up out of the way, but I want to move it down here where I can really show you guys, because it doesn't go up on that shelf anyway. I just haven't figured out where I was going to put it. I wanted to hang it from the ceiling, but it's so heavy, I don't think I can do it. Uh, this is a B25 Mitchell I made out of Legos. You might notice there's four props on this side and three on this. That's because this side I had a pre-made prop to put on. And this side, I had to make my own prop, so it became four prop. And, yeah, so there's a mismatch in the props. But I have a rotating gun turret up here. I had a couple guns down here. I don't know what happened. I think they fell off. I got the little uh, gunner bay down here with the little clear pieces. This thing is so heavy. Um, of course, I got the wings, obviously, for every plane. you got to have those key essentials. <laughs> I got the little cockpit windows up there. I got the uh, landing gear. A couple swing down bombs. Nothing special. I didn't want to go through making a bomb bay and all that. I got the... These are actually off of Millennium Falcon kit, I think. The jet engine's off of Millennium Falcon. And then I have a tail. Wheels. I made a little American flag emblem for the side here. And then on... Uh, rear gun turret, of course. Now on this side, I tried to do like the Allied Star, but of course you can't make a star out of Legos, so it just kind of turned out to be a cross. But anyway, that's my uh, Lego rendition of the B25 Mitchell. It's pretty awesome. I took a photo of it one day with I had these old guys from the Lego System era which was like 90s or something. A couple old, like, gas station Lego men. They wore, like, green jumpsuits or whatever. And I rotated these props down, and I had them hanging onto them like they were rotating the props. Because if you didn't know, these old planes like this, okay, before they could start them up, you should watch the startup on a B-25. It's a, quite a process. You have to come out and get a couple of the guys to come out and rotate these props by hand. Because what would happen is all the oil would go into the base of the engine. So they'd go out and they'd rotate the props by hand to get all that oil pumped up from the base of the engine. And then they'd go to start an engine. And the engines didn't start together. They started independently. So you, you know, you'd rotate this one, rotate it, rotate it, and then it'd go... And then smoke would pour out of it, and then it'd go... And then it would just pick up speed and turn. And then they'd come over here. They'd rotate this one, rotate this one, rotate this one. And then they'd start up. And, and then that one would take off. And then they'd just get this hum. And then it would taxi down the runway. And just go right up in the air. It's unbelievable. And the smoke show when one of these takes off. It's crazy. And another favorite bomber of mine. I have to at least mention. I don't have anything in my room to represent it is the B-52, and that's about probably the same era as uh, 
the SR-71. Only they still use the B-52, because in remote areas, like in the Middle East and things, they don't have the uh, radar and stuff. That's what happens to these planes, you know. They, they're they old, and they're not, uh, like, stealth. You know, they don't fly under the radar. So they look like a blimp on the radar to these countries with, you know, high-tech capabilities. So they have to retire the planes and come up with something new. But the B-52, they've just put a bunch of money into uh, upgrading it. I should find a photo. I think I have a book over here that has a photo of one. Uh, American Combat Planes. Yeah, it's this one. Uh, but the B-52, they just put a bunch of money in to make it be able to carry like nuclear warheads and stuff and a bunch of different crazy upgrades. So they're going to be able to use that even more than they were in the past. And it's a huge plane. Absolutely ginormous. One of the biggest planes, I would say, that the military has. You know, as far as bombers go. Uh, maybe even the biggest bomber ever. I don't know. But, anyway. Uh, and there's actually a B-52 crash in Maine, if you didn't know that, on Elephant Mountain. But anyway, the uh, the B-52s were way smokier than that. Because they had the jet engines on them, and they just whine, and the smoke would pour it out of them. And a fully loaded B-52, you could see, the, there's so much fuel in them when they take off, that the wings would be tipped down like this, sagging. And it used so much fuel to get a B-52 off the ground, that the wings would actually come back up. And they'd be, you know, low on fuel by the time they got them off the ground. So then they'd have to meet them in the air with a, a fueling plane and uh, fuel them back up. So once they got off the ground, so that's kind of a fun fact. Uh, B-52, B-52, B-52. You know, the B-29. I was never a fan of the B-29 either. So another fun fact here, guys. Um, while I'm finding this photo. 150 to 152. Uh, do you know, think about this, what the B stands for in these bombers? Like B-52, B-17, B-25. Go ahead and leave a comment. What do you think? Now I know, oh, there's one. There's B-52. Huge plane, ginormous. There's a B-52. There's B-52. These are all different models. There's a B-52. There's another one. There's one. That's a good shot. Shows you how big they are. Look at them giant jets. Jet engines on them. Look at those. Two on each side. That is, I mean, you cannot fathom the size of these things. I've never seen one complete. But I've seen like the wreckage from the crash on Alpha Mountain. And just the tires are so big, you can't even imagine. It's crazy. And they do an elephant walk with these, they call it. Where it's like a drill. So if the country was ever attacked, they see how fast they could get like the bombers and stuff off the ground. And they'll do them with the B-52s. And they'll get out there and they'll just fire them up. And they'll start coming down the runway just as close to each other as they can. You know, and still get off the ground. And it's like, when once they get them all off the ground, you can't even see. It's just so thick with fog and smoke and stuff. So anyway. Alright, so the answer is the B in these bomber's names stands for, not bomber. I know somebody out there was like, does it stand for bomber? <laughs> no, it does not. It stands for Boeing. Because Boeing was actually the manufacturer of these planes. Just like everyone else, Boeing had to, uh, you know, get into war manufacturing when these wars started. You know, they had to step outside the box. They couldn't just make uh, regular old planes. They had to start, whoops. <laughs> yeah, the mechanics way. So want to take a look at that before they just go up in the air on this thing. <laughs> so anyway, they had to start manufacturing war planes and things. So, fun fact. That was a lot of information. But Anyway. Alright. So we're going to finish this up. Uh, you know I am a huge Transformers junkie. 
and I have started collecting, I don't know how many more I'm going to collect because they're expensive, but I don't know, but Masterpiece Transformers. These are very collectible collectibles. <laughs> Masterpiece MP36 Megatron, G1 Megatron. The old school Megatron that transforms into a, uh, what's the name? Walther, P38 handgun. Instead of a tank, like the new Megatrons all transform into. Look at that. Look at that. That makes sound effects. Just saying. Alright. And then we have MP10, Optimus Prime. And yes, these do actually transform. Believe it or not. Some people are shocked. They're like, wait, that can actually transform? Because you don't see, like, the, the luggage on them. You know, like, most Transformers, you can see... Like, the parts that, you know, form whatever they transform into, just there. You know, still, even though they're a robot, they're just everywhere. <sighs> and these guys, Masterpiece did a good job of concealing that stuff. And Optimus Prime here, he has the Matrix in his chest. I wish I could open. Well, maybe I can. It's going to get kind of crazy. Of course, he's got his rifle. Okay, come on. Come on. It's hard to get that last one open. Okay. I'm going to set you guys down here. Look at Megatron. Come on. There it goes. Got her open now. Alright. It has the... Uh, Good mags has the uh, die cast matrix of leadership. This chest, pretty awesome. Then we have a little die cast Optimus Prime truck down there. We have a roller here, a couple of masterpiece collector's cards. Uh, the box from MP21 Bumblebee, just a random stitch hanging out in the Transformers display. Not sure why. Also, I have uh taped up some lighting, which looks pretty cool at night. Uh, my rendition of a Lego G1 Optimus Prime, complete with a double barrel rifle and shoulder mounted guns just for added effect. <laughs> Here's a little Bumblebee, the old school Bumblebee that transforms into the VW Beetle. And we have Spike, no wait, Spike, Daniel, Daniel. We have a random, just like a Batman, hanging out here. So, I'm Batman. <laughs> All right, and then we have the G1 original 1980s Transformers Optimus Prime toy. That was Dad's. As you can see, the fists are missing. It's been beat to a pulp. Uh, it does not even stand on its own anymore. The springs are worn out, so I had to stick a couple uh, driver bits. You can see them under his legs to hold him up. <laughs> to keep his legs locked in place. So yeah, anyway, the little Transformers display there, pretty awesome. I am Optimus Prime. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty much it. We got some, this is my new inventory, all the grandpa's old small engine equipment, parts and stuff. I gotta work on getting more organized, but yeah, I got all the parts now. That's sweet for old discontinued stuff that I happen to own and nobody else can find the parts for so now I have all the parts for all the stuff I need so that's awesome I'm really I'm really excited like all the parts for that that I've been looking for for so long that I couldn't find I actually have now in mass quantity so all right guys I think that's pretty much it we're gonna give a full rotation I got my closet there some chainsaw chaps down there Full rotation. Here we go. Slow, full rotation of Codger's workshop. Should get a good shot from over here of maybe the whole room. I can get it all in frame. No, I can't. <laughs> but 
that is the shop. This is where I spend all my time. Tinkering and dreaming and writing and being me. No. <laughs> so, guys, this has been an absolute blast. Like, the best blast ever. If you enjoyed this, leave a thumbs up. Leave a comment. I wanted to do this live, so... The internet's so spotty. I knew I'd just get started, and then the internet would die, and then it would be a nightmare. So, if there's anything that you saw in here that you want a backstory on that I didn't tell about, just leave a comment, and I'll either tell about it in a future video or answer you in the comments. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. This has been a blast. I've wanted to do this for so long, but it's so hard because you want to get everything just perfect, right, to do it. And I always have projects coming and things, and this is always like a bomb one off in here. So, I spent all day yesterday getting this ready. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. It's been a blast. We're going to do some more special stuff like this. And I was thinking the other day, I'm like, I'm eight, well, not quite 18. I'm 17 and a half, and I'm graduated, right? And I don't know how much longer I'm going to be here at home. So, I need to get this done. And it's kind of tragic, because Codger's Workshop, eventually, it's inevitable that it's going to change. And this is not going to be Codger's Workshop for forever. Unfortunately. It does really choke me up, though. It's, it's so hard to imagine doing projects anywhere else. I mean, I've been... I used to, when I was really little, I was in the bedroom downstairs. But as soon as I got a little age on me, they moved me up here. And um, I've been here for so long, you know. And, jeez, I was doing projects in here when I was like 10, probably. So, seven years of dreams and projects. I can't believe it. Time flies, guys. It's crazy. So, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. It's It's been a lot of fun. I like, I like telling stories and telling you guys about different things. And I don't know. I talk a lot, but it gets me excited. <laughs> so, yeah, there's going to be more great videos coming. Like I said, we'll have a review of the 870. I'm just waiting for a good sunny day to do it. And, jeez, I don't know, a whole bunch of different stuff. So, there again, if you liked the video, leave a like, subscribe. Thank you for watching Codger's Workshop. And, thank you for letting helping the channel grow. We've got some new subscribers out there. I don't know who you are, but get involved. Leave a comment, okay? We are so happy to have you guys. All right, the channel is growing. I mean, we've really tried to be dedicated this last little past bit to putting up videos a lot. And, you know, we've had a video almost every day for the past, what, month or something. COVID kind of helped boost things because I was thinking, well, everybody's home right now, so it's a great time to try to build the channel. So we've gained... Probably 10 subscribers just in the past month or so. So, anyway guys, it has been quite a journey. Thank you for coming on the journey. And we're always building to make it better. And the more, you know, the channel grows, the more we can afford the bigger equipment and different stuff. To do better videos. Uh, yeah. So, thank you guys. I've I've gone to end the video like three times now, but it, you know, you never realize until you do it how hard it is to say goodbye. Like, I don't know. I don't want to say goodbye to you guys. It's so hard. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, more videos to come. This is Codger saying, you finally got the door. <laughs> Stay tuned for more. That, that was awesome. Sounded great. That actually rhymed.